polling shows that Trump's share of the electorate, it's a guess, 30 to 35 percent. It's not enough to win a national election in and of itself. Mm -hmm. So maybe there has been some erosion. And if, even if 5% of his support were to drop off, that would hurt him in a serious way. But he still has a whole lot of support. There's no reason to think Republicans are really moving away from me. Welcome to The Debrief, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists with the headlines they're covering this week and where the story's going next. I'm Jim Antle, and I'm joined today by magazine managing editor David Mark. David. The Republican presidential race and the race for 2024 in general is really starting to unfold. And on the Republican side, former President Donald Trump still seems larger than life in the way that he has for much of the past eight years. Right. Trump is really dominating the field. Anybody who tries to stick their head up against him at this point is just getting swatted down, whether it's the probable leading rival to Trump, Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis, or some of the lesser known characters out there like Vivek Ramaswamy or Tim Scott, even though Trump hasn't even wasted his time on them. It will be interesting to see if somebody like Asa Hutchinson, the former Arkansas governor, or prospectively uh, Chris Christie, the former New Jersey governor, right. can confront Trump head on. So far, that's never really worked, but it's never really been tried either. So right. it's a novel strategy. It's still very much iffy. I mean, you pointed out in a piece for us that, you know, in any ordinary set of circumstances, uh, him being found liable in the E. Jean Carroll case, yes. uh, that would be a major issue that your rivals for the nomination would want to hit you on. But of anybody with any real standing in the polls, that wasn't really what happened. No, the hardest hit really was Asa Hutchinson, the former mm -hmm. Arkansas governor, who put out a critical statement, but it was maybe a six out of 10 right. on the political heat scale. It could have been a lot more intense. The rest of them, any of his other prospective serious rivals, just basically excused it, say, oh, voters don't care about that. Or in one case, Vivek Ramaswamy said, oh, that's just the deep state. I don't believe the New York City jury. Well, I guess right. it was a federal case, but right. the, the jury pool that came from New York. New York, yeah. exactly. Those liberals up right. there. Mike Pence, Trump's own former vice president, said, ah, oh, that's essentially baked in and uh, to voters' decisions. Nikki Haley, the ex-South Carolina governor, just tried to pivot and not answer at all. And a couple of the other of them did the same thing. So it, it just shows there's no percentage of it in trying to confront him at this point, frontally. And it, even if they do, they're probably going to lose, which shows, again, why Trump is the leading candidate with, admittedly, lots of time to go. It really shows the difficult dynamics of this race, where the people who want to launch full frontal assaults on Trump are basically asterisk candidates at this point, even if some of them, like Chris Christie, have, have shown themselves in the past to be pretty effective punchers. Yeah. Um, you know, they're not high polling candidates. And the candidate who seems best positioned to take on Trump can't really do it in a full frontal way because he's trying to position himself as Trump's heir. Yes. And, it, and so, and then Trump is attacking him constantly, so it's sort of asymmetric warfare, no? Right, if anything, Ron DeSantis is kind of going at Trump from the right, saying mm -hmm. he, he's sort of hinted at this here and there on like Second Amendment issue guns and other matters like that. He's too liberal and he has not been intense. On COVID, that's a matter of great dispute between the two of them. Sure. Trump goes after DeSantis, but the rea reality is DeSantis' go Florida governor was among the most aggressive in going against the conventional wisdom of COVID-19 lockdowns. Maybe you agree with that, maybe you don't. Time will tell if that was, was really a good idea. But he just really has not been able to make a mark. Now, he has not been out there as a declared candidate, and maybe he has some strategy that we don't know about yet. But right. so far, it's just really hard to see how he gets traction. I mean, I think the hope that the rest of the Republican field, including DeSantis, has is that even if they don't make the case directly, that at some point the accumulation of the baggage will weigh in the back of Republican voters' minds yeah. and they'll say, do we really need this in 2024? Of course, that was effectively the strategy in 2016 and right. we saw where that went. Now, there's some qualitative differences in that polling shows that Trump's share of the electorate it's a guess, 30 to 35%. It's not 
enough to win a national election in and of itself. Mm -hmm. So maybe there has been some erosion. And if, even if 5% of his support were to drop off, that would hurt him in a serious way. But he still has a whole lot of support. There's no reason to think Republicans are really moving away from him. If you look at Republican senators, they're really split on this. Some know that he's a bad deal for the general election. They'll say that it Openly, interestingly, most of the senators were just reelected in 2022, right. aren't on the ballot again until 2028, right. maybe 2026 in a couple mm -hmm. cases. But anybody who has real political skin in the game, this cycle is just keeping their mouth shut effectively. Now, if there's anything that Joe Biden and Donald Trump, though, can collectively teach us, it's that in the current environment, if you could win a major party's presidential nomination, you can be elected president of the United States. Well, that's right. We are in set, we're such a closely divided country. The Senate being 51, 49, at Democrats' mm -hmm. favor. The House, similar percentage, and Republicans' favor. It, Democrats had a, the same majority last time. A lot of the state legislatures are almost evenly divided in the swing states. Governorships, Republicans have a slight edge. Point being, it is just such a close country closely divided country, either major party candidate is going to win about 47% of the vote automatically. And once you get into that range, you're at like playoff football time. You both have two really strong teams. Any one could take it depending on the conditions that given year. So anybody ruling out Trump as the next president return to, returning to the White House is just crazy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, David. Thank you. You can read David and the rest of our political team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.